There were two chess positions that left me speechless this year, and here's the first one, it is white to play and win, and even Stockfish cannot solve it. For real. And the position is really out of this world. If you wish, you may try to solve it on your own, but just, it's very complex. Alright, let's try to figure it out together. So, what's going on here? First off, we can see that it is an endgame, and there isn't much material left on the board, therefore if White wants to win, he's gotta do something very special. Now, the first moves that comes to mind are possibly to capture one of these two pawns. By the way, White is moving up, Black is moving down, so that's the whole situation. So White could take one of these two pawns, maybe White could also take the knight over here on a8. And, just a spoiler, all these moves are incorrect. If you considered one of them, then congratulations, you are thinking exactly like Stockfish. So, let's figure out what's wrong with these moves. If you take over here, it's probably the worst option, because black recaptures with a check to your king, and clearly that's not giving you anything. If you take this pawn, it's a better try for white, because you're trying to expose his king, and indeed it's bad for black to take here, because if so, the king is getting exposed. You can approach with your queen somehow with queen f5 or queen h3, and after that you're gonna check his king to death like somehow this way. So that's bad for black, but what saves black is that he doesn't have to take. He can go to h8 in the corner of the board, and now this pawn of white is kind of covering the king, and you, there's not much we can do, and white cannot make progress. So that's that's why these two moves did not win for white. Alternatively, if you try to take on a8, that also doesn't do too much. Black can just recapture, for example, and or go queen e6, and black will just start checking your king, and again, white can't make much progress here. So what is the solution? That is something that puzzles even Stockfish. That is a gigantic move out of this world, bishop to c7. Like, you're playing the move which no one expects, which doesn't seem to make any sense at first. You don't capture anything, instead you let your opponent to capture either a piece, like, whatever he wants, right, he can capture. And somehow all these moves of black are losing. Crazy. Now, uh, first off, he's gotta address the threat of queen takes e8. And so, of course, the most natural move for black is just to accept your queen sacrifice, just to capture your queen. By the way, he can't take your bishop, although that defends the queen, but then you win with pawn takes f7, notice this pin, so he can't recapture, and therefore he hits two birds with one pawn, and you win. But of course, the main question is, what if black just grabs your queen? Then you play pawn takes f7, attacking the king. And it has to go to the side, it can't go here because of bishop d6 checkmate, that's pretty clear. But what if he hides in the corner? What do you do then? Black is up a queen, and it looks like you have no attacking moves right now. But you put your bishop in the ambush, and you're threatening to move your king on the next move and to actually checkmate black. So if black plays some move, let's say something like this, that is a legit checkmate. I mean, black can't do anything. It seems like having an extra queen, a knight, and two pawns, and black's turn, there must be multiple ways for black to counter this simple threat. For example, what if black just gives some space for his king? But in this case, you can actually move your king to this square, because there is no pawn on h7 that covers it anymore, and you still create this checkmate in pattern. What else can black try? Well, he also has to actually maintain the guard of this square on f8, or else he'll push the pawn forward and promote it, and will also checkmate him. What if he just tries to go king, queen to f8? Well, then you can still execute the same threat, and after he covers, you can then make use of this pin to then promote your queen and to win the game. The queen is pinned, and so he can't do anything, it's checkmate. However, that's not the end of story, because black has still a powerful counter that keeps him in the game, which is queen to c5, and that addresses both of white's threats. You still keep an eye on that square on f8, so white can't push the pawn forward, plus you attack this bishop on a5, and you're threatening just to capture it. Black is having another knight and two extra pawns, so if, if black can just eliminate this aggressive bishop, that's game over for white. What do you do then? It means that white can't just move the king, because black will simply grab this bishop, and thanks to black's mature advantage, he'll win the game. So what should white do? Well, that's quite a tricky question. White wants to maintain the bishop along this diagonal to still have the same hope for a checkmate with the bishop. But a lot of squares across this diagonal are controlled by the queen. Therefore, white has only these two squares available, b2 or a1. So which means that you gotta bring your bishop either to a1 or to b2. And crazily enough, one of these moves win and the other one loses the game. Like, I've told you that this puzzle is out of this world, because it's really hard to comprehend the logic of what's going on here. Long story short, bishop b2 wins the game, bishop a1 loses the game, and I'll tell you why in a second. Now, right now it may feel like, okay, finally white is winning. You know, black can't both attack the bishop and prevent you from pushing the pawn forward, so on the next move you'll play something like king e6, and you'll still checkmate him because of your bishop and because of your pawn. 
but there is one more resource that black's got here, it's knight to c7. And this way, white would wish to move his king, but strangely enough, all the squares where the king could possibly go to are controlled by black, and so you just have no square for your king to move and to deliver this beautiful checkmate. And then, this is a position of mutual Zugzwang, which is another phenomenal thing about this puzzle. Like, there is no explanation here. What's the catch? Like, white can't really move anything, because the king just can't make moves, the pawn can't move because it will be captured, and the bishop has only these two squares which are safe along this diagonal. So white can only move the bishop back and forth between these two squares. But the same is true for black. Like, the queen can't move, the queen has to maintain the guard of this square as well as to cut her king off, or else the king will move, and the knight has to cover this square, the pawn has to cover this square. So the only thing that black can do is to move this a-pawn forward. And so white can only move the bishop back and forth, black can only push the pawn forward. So white goes bishop a1, black goes a4, bishop b2, a3, then bishop goes to a1, and finally we reach the position of the mutual Zugzwang, where if it were white to move, white will lose the game because he runs out of moves. White would have to give up something and lose the game. But because it is black to play, black can go pawn to a2 now, and after bishop b2, that is the ultimate Zugzwang position for black. He has to drop one of his pieces or move something and he loses the game. Like, that's why it was so crucial for white, you know, a couple moves later, a couple moves earlier, I'm sorry, to put the bishop on b2, not on a1. You see, it's very critical where does the bishop stand. Because in the previous position here, if it was white to move, white would lose. So it was very important for white to foresee this and to put the bishop on the right square. But now, because it was black to play, white actually wins the Zugzwan war and wins the game. So black has to do something, either move the queen for instance somewhere or whatever, and then you move the king and you finally execute your main threat and black is dead. He can sacrifice the queen to prolong it for one more move, but ultimately that is a checkmate anyway. And here's the second position which somehow I've found to be very satisfying, so hopefully you will enjoy it just as well. That is a position from the game between Karl Schnoy playing white against Hover playing black. And the position is approximately equal, but black found the move which he thought is a winning combo. That's a move rook takes b2. And the idea is that it just exposes the white king, and if white captures here, then after rook to g2 check, the queen and as well as the rook, they team up against the king, and white is kind of going down, white is losing the game. So black was hoping for this finish. Let's take it back. But Krishnoi was known as the main villain of the chess world thanks to his aggressive and controversial character and he found a really smart way to outdo his opponent. And let this be a little challenge for you. So try to solve it. If you can find the good variation for white, please write it down in the comments below. It's quite a tricky line, so if you don't get it, don't worry. You can just go down to comments and somebody will write it for you. Let me also remind you that it is the final chance to make use of the current special offers in honor of my birthday celebration. So if you ever wanted to achieve your chess goals and you wanted to have me on your side helping you do just that faster and more efficiently, please click the link below the video and pick the course that you like with a 50% discount and on top of that it's also buy one get one free. Again, it's the final day to do that, so don't miss out if you're interested and either way, have a great rest of the day and keep crushing it.